Jam Podcast. Hi, I'm Brand, and I love Tyler Hines. And I'm Tyler. It's only two of us. I'm Tyler Hines, and uh, I'm wishing that Brand was in my kitchen right now. And this is the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Could you be any louder? You're just moving around. Is yelling? You're, no, you're not. Oh, yet. Everything it, else you're doing is loud. Oh, is it playing over top of your beautiful music? Yeah, I'm not that good. I'm not like muting you. <laughs> I'm just oh, letting not. things. No, Lord, no. You think we're professional? Just, I mean, I just know that you look professional, whether your technology is professional. Is there people talking to us right now? In the chat, maybe. Wow. Bramblegenplus.com. They get to watch this live. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? You guys aren't technological. Look at you. That's true. That's true. Straight to the people. Tyler, did you see this yesterday or a few days ago? I don't know when I'm posting this, actually. Um, they're doing this. Your, your heinies. <laughs> your heinie is uh, they're posting stuff about you for like 30 days or something like that, which yeah. uh, I don't have 30 days worth of stuff that people can post about me. So kudos to you. Um, but one of the days was well, we haven't gotten interview. there yet, so we don't know that well, necessarily. That, yeah, that's that true. That's idea, true. Yeah, We're only on day like 17 or something like that. So by day 25, people yeah. are going to start trickling out. Uh, but people were saying yeah. their, their favorite interview is whenever we get to chat. And so that made my heart really warm, warm inside. Doesn't it? Isn't that it beautiful? The gift that they can give us. This is the power that they yield. They they with great power comes great responsibility. And their responsibility is to make you feel warm inside yeah well that's well mission accomplished everybody i I felt very warm there for uh 24 hours and now i'm back to just being cold and dead inside um but we'll get there uh not not for much longer though because always (laughs) samore the the next uh tyler heinz juggernaut is coming out um yeah and i'm very excited about it always always amore excited always amore excited what's that mean I don't speak uh, French. I don't speak. Uh, I don't speak uh, Greek. <laughs> I don't speak whatever well, language that is. This movie is about um, you going to a, France. An Italian restaurant. Italian restaurant and Great. falling in love. Yeah. You have no idea what this movie's about? I have no idea what this movie's about. No. Oh, great. You want me to pitch you? Um, No, I don't need to be pitched. I mean, I do do have some hard-hitting journalistic questions, though, if you don't mind. He hears a title and he goes, uh, no, I think uh, it's equal. No, no, no. What I mean is I don't need to be pitched because you're in it. Autumn's in it. I like both of you humans. And so I'm going to watch it. I don't need to be pitched. I guess we can do it. You know, you're on this press thing, so I guess you can talk about it if you want to. But what I want to oh, know no. is this is a, a Hallmark Movies and Mysteries movie, which was a surprise yeah. to me. That's the network that's, uh, that it's going to be dropped on. Um, what is it like for you to be downgraded uh, from Hallmark <laughs> Channel to Hallmark Movies and Mysteries? And did they give you any explanation for why that happened? I don't understand any of these things. I mean, I checked out as soon as I heard Always a more. I don't speak... I don't speak Cantonese. So You know what I think um, this is though? I, I'm giving I'm giving you grief here, but what I actually think it is is that they don't currently yeah. know they're trying to figure out what they're doing with this network. And they say Heinz is a hitter. He's a home runner. So let's throw okay. the Heinz movie on movies and mysteries, see what type of damage we can do. Week following that, Andrew Walker Walker, Nikki Deloach. Just Grand yeah. slam after grand slam overs on movies and mysteries. Were you in the pitch meeting when they're like, this is how we're going to turn the network around? I mean, this is a real positive way to look at it, and I appreciate that. The other alternative was the way you initially pitched it. No, nobody <laughs> believes the way that I initially right. initiated. Nobody believes that. No one believes Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I'm sure. Look, I mean, I think those people um, behind the scenes have a lot to juggle. And... Uh, my small little brain, I'm sure, couldn't wrap my head around uh, half the things that they do. So I don't know why 
this movie will air there. I don't know exactly the implications of such or if it will affect the uh, the enjoyment of our audience. Hopefully not. Um, these are all uh, above my pay grade. There's three Hallmark <coughs> networks, Tyler. It is Hallmark Channel, mm-hmm. Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, and... Always Hallmark, Hallmark drama. Hallmark drama is the third ah, one. Okay. Yes, and if, of course. And if, and if you could tell me what the point of that network is, I'll give you a lot of points because there is no purpose. I've been pitching for a long time. <laughs> Let's just turn this into the Hallmark Christmas channel, get Christmas going 365. Yeah. No one yeah. seems to be. I'm just shouting this into a, 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 an endless void. Um, yeah. So, you know, whatever weight you have over there, just throw that in there to see if uh, you can make some damage okay. happen. But always some more. Give me, give me, I do want to hear the pitch because I know. There's a restaurant of sorts. I will be honest. I do know a little bit about this movie, and it's going to surprise mm. a lot of people. It sounds similar to some other ones that I've seen. and so. I, but there's uh-huh. nuances. There's nuances in these. And so tell me Always. about this one, uh, why you're especially stoked about it, and why the world, the universe, should be stoked on Always Amore. Well, I'm not sure that anybody should be stoked on anything. Uh, right. Okay. However, good. that being hey, said, hey, stop um, selling, pal. You, stop. Stop there. Yeah. Um, you're good. I don't think anybody should be stoked. F- far, far, far be it for me to presume what people should be stoked about. But the reason why I, uh, I, uh, I thought that this movie uh, might be a nice movie is I think it, it's um, it's a moment I think to acknowledge people in the hospitality industry. I think that. Uh, Hospitality industry has taken a pretty hard hit the last couple of years, and and I thought uh, if there was something worthwhile doing, um, maybe making a movie that uh, might make them feel acknowledged or or seen or appreciated uh, wouldn't be a bad thing. So I think the story does that, um, and I think that it's a it's a somewhat adult telling of uh, of story of a woman who's trying to move on and move past something. And I think uh, those are the two reasons to watch, if any. Um, and Autumn Reeser and a bunch of other. Patty is unbelievable. Um, Her name is just Patty? Things. Patty McCormick. Thank you. You can just be dropping first names. Patty. That could be I, you, Look, to be completely transparent, I hesitated. I, I got a little <laughs> concerned about the pronunciation. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know how to, what always Amore means. And so I backed out. I checked it out <laughs> and you called me on it. It's, and it's now Patty. I'm here. It's Patty. Yeah. Need I say Patty. more? It's Patty. What's Patty. my last name? I had a concussion. While you know my last name? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. You don't know my last name? Yeah. I think I remember seeing it once and being pretty confused by it. I do remember that. <laughs> it's it's literally the like, least it's the least confusing last name of all time. It's gray. The color gray. Oh, is it? Could not be less confusing, Tyler. It's, it's the most boring. It's, in your defense, it's the most boring of colors. Well, no, I mean, for some reason, I re- recalled it being like the longer. What's Dan's last name? Thompson. Yeah, none of these are ringing a bell. You're right. Just Handoff? never, never knew your Handoff? last name. If if you gave me a thousand guesses, I would have never gotten to gray. Never. This makes me feel like even but, though even though we personally follow each other on social media, it makes me feel like you don't actually follow me. Well, no, but here's the thing on your social media, which I saw you post pictures and lovely. Is your last name involved in your handle? It is. It is. Yeah. Is it on your yeah. personal account? Personal account. Yeah, it is. Let's, let's get into this. Okay. Need- okay. Okay. First of, first of all, first of all, this is the problem here. Brandon <laughs> Gray wins. This is why I was confused. Okay. You know what? It's all coming together now. And please don't follow me. I won't let you. It's a private account. But uh, Brandon Gray wins. <laughs> okay, you thought my right. last name was Gray wins. Yes. And yes. that's a confusing last name. Gray wins. Because that yes. doesn't make any sense. Yes. Yes. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. I'm, problem s- I'm sorry. I, should... I mean, Andrew Walker is a walks. Like, what is that? I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have called you out like that. That was that was not professional. Of me. Just because I read your Instagram t- uh, handle frenetically. I didn't yeah. think that, oh, it must stop here. And now he must mean the word wins. But if you know me, you deduction. know that's ac- like it's accurate. You're Brandon right. Gray I wins. saw the, the personality reflected in the handle. You're right. Brandon Gray wins. Okay. Hi, yeah. I'm Brandon. Brandon Gray wins. 
I, I mean, it hate sounds it. pretty official. Yeah. No, it's not bad. So your character uh, is a restaurant fixer. Is Am I understanding this correctly? Yeah. And you go in and you fix a yeah, restaurant? How many, how many movies have done that? Lots. You can tell me that. Yeah, a good bit. But yeah. okay. none, of them, none of them have done it with the two of you. And I think, listen, That's I've said this a million times. These movies are all about the chemistry and all about who's in it. And... If if you can uh, if you can knock it out then then that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if I've seen the movie a thousand times. It matters okay. who's in it. So I'm here for it. Well, buddy. well, we'll see. You said you got a concussion on this movie. Yeah, the second or third last day. I Is this one of those stories that you're gonna be telling on all the interviews, or or should I dive into it? If I have mentioned it today, it was in passing. I don't know that we dove into it. All right, let's dive into it then. I, you know me better than this by now. I only want exclusive stuff. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Um, I'm very exclusive. I was saving a bunch of puppies from a burning <laughs> building while giving to charity, funnily enough. Um, and then I raised the puppies with my own, and they've gone on to... Uh, be service animals that have since saved other people. So it's really gone full circle. But in that process, I got a concussion. How did you possibly get a concussion? How did you possibly get a concussion that way? Danger. It was a, you're, it was, I mean, it was he, a, like a perceived thing. Your brain was like, I can't handle this. No, no, there was physical trauma. And you know, some people throw around the word hero, not me, of course, but no. some people. Well, congratulations. Will we see any of this footage in the movie or? No, uh, but if you do see my eyes glaze over during maybe a moment when Autumn is speaking, that's probably why. There's a solid 25% <laughs> of this movie where you're just like this. Yeah. Just staring. Exactly. Just glazed just, over. Can't... Just gone. Just drifting yeah. in the wind. But really, that's par. Isn't it? It is. You That's might just far. you might think into it. You might go, wow, like he's got such a distant look in his eye. He's got like a thousand yard stare. He's so deep. Nah. Let me let me ask you this one, bud. Um, you're in a, you're you've been in a good bit of these, especially over the last twelve months. Do, yeah. Have you had time? Well, one, I don't actually know this about you. Do you like the like the audition hustle, like going out for things, <clears throat> or at this point, are you like you know what? I'm I'm in my world and that this kind of world doing these movies a handful of them every year allow me to pursue other things that I'm really excited about or are you still on the side auditioning for you know young Shelton Certainly not young Shelton No uh, I would actually <laughs> stop the interview here if if you said that you if you have auditioned for young Shelton you're not welcome yeah. back Okay not a big fan of that show I don't. I've never seen it, but it just shouldn't exist. I, that's kind of my my feeling yeah. on it. That's your feeling, okay? Yeah. Old Shelton also no good. Uh, old Shelton's better. Old people are always better. Fact, facts. Um, I mean, to answer your question, I got a pretty full dance card as it is. Um, I have trouble finding time to be able to uh, produce and 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 create the things that I sort of have lined up. Um, though I am doing that. Uh, so yeah, is there, is there some cool stuff that comes along? Yep. Uh, there's somebody reaching out, uh, funnily enough. It's been, but it's been less auditions. It's been some kind of just availability checks and uh, just queries to see if I'm interested in doing something, which is obviously a nice position to be in. Uh, not that I'm in some sort of fantastic position, but uh, enough to have that happen sometimes, which is very nice. And uh, but no, I did. There's a new show called Mayor of Kingstown, which is Taylor yeah. Sheridan's uh, show. Yeah. I auditioned for that. That was an audition. Um, there's a new show coming out uh, with our boy Josh Brolin, who's a legend. He and, is our boy. Uh, That's true. Yeah. He's this guy is, is a talent. Um, he's got a new show coming out. I auditioned to play his brother in that show, which I really wanted to do. But when you good. say uh, when you say audition, is this a hey? Is this the the people saying calling your guy, your team, and being like, hey, we think this might be a fit. Can you throw something down on tape for us? 
Or is it your guys being like, hey, there's this thing we think you're a good fit for it. Let's throw your name in that in the ring. I, it's probably a combination of, uh-huh. of the above. And then there are things like that just come as either a straight offer or, yeah, like let's do a, there was a show that I actually did my an audition in person the other day, um, not in person, but over Zoom with the producers. And it was a chemistry read and it was somebody just reaching out and saying, look, that we really want to consider him. And they just explained what the show was. And, um, and uh, yeah, just went into the chemistry read. So just sort of jumped to the end. And uh, yeah, so once in a while, but again, I, I, I don't have enough time as it is to do the things that I want to do yet. So I'm just trying to play catch up, you know? You're just trying to play ball with the boys. That's all you're trying. That's all you're just trying, trying to hang out here. I'm just trying to hit a FaceTime with my man with a nice stripy red background. It is. I, I look backwards like a moron, but yes, I, I know. I know, <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. How many? Uh, um, Hold on. Someone says this is an actual audition right yes, now. It is. It's pretty funny. I like that. I shout that out. I, like I actually there. let me. Uh, I'm gonna give you. Let's do real quick a little bit of you improv do this? here. I want to do this right yeah. now. I okay. I'm okay. Yeah. So I've been working on a project where a guy. Ah, oh God, should I get into this? I don't know. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's get into it. So there's a a firefighter. His name is Jeff. He's married, has kids. He wake. He goes okay. into a fire. He comes out. And he's and he's back in the sixties. And go. That sounds like my, sounds like my concussion story. Yeah. So and go. he goes into the fire, and upon exiting this fire, yes, he's just so, out, and then all of a sudden, there's like sixties cars around. Yes. Sixties yes. clothes. So that that's actually where we're going to pick up here for the audition. You are coming out of the fire, and you're seeing things for the first time. Oh, we're doing an audition now. Yes, Tyler. Oh, get, uh, sorry, catch sorry, up. Sorry. I know you had a uh, you had a concussion, but pal, sheesh. Should I get nude? That's normally what I do for auditions. <laughs> you at, <laughs> you've never gotten nude on no. this program, and I just want to make that kind of an audition. Clear. This is this is another this is another ploy of yours to get me shirtless, and I'm not <laughs> doing it today. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday afternoon. I. It's usually Sunday nights late, and I'm I'm you know stick sheets to the wind or whatever that saying is. Not today. Well, I'm not today. Whiskey, so I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you are. Wouldn't be an appropriate right. for a shirt to come up. Fire. Yes. You're walking right. out. Fire. And scene. Why is everybody dressed like this? What do you think? That was good. I think a lot I mean, of it was subtle. A lot of it was subtle. And if you're just listening and not watching, then you'd, you'd miss a lot yeah. of the nuance. But it... Yeah. But the subtlety is actually what the uh, brings is. the whole thing to life, you know? Yeah. I mean, we're, this is a pretty far-fetched premise. To go into a fire and come out in the 60s, this is already a leap. So I think, you know, you can't lean into it. <laughs> Thank you for taking your jacket off. For that, yeah. that, uh, that was part of it, though. That was It's the little things. Yeah. Like, if you were wearing it's that jacket, things. I wouldn't have been able. I was, I was Tyler with the jacket on. Jacket off, I became... Jeff. Jeff Gray wins. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Gray wins. That's exactly right. How many um, in a hypothetical world? Yeah. Well, it's not even hypothetical. There, we're not going to get into the business. I'm not going to ask you about business stuff. But there's these yeah. contracts going on, like Brian Elliott just signed a, a for a movie deal and all this stuff with Hallmark and this things. How many, like in your ideal world? What's the sweet spot for Tyler Hines as far as how many of these wonderful Hallmark movies you'd like to do in a year or w- without getting burnt out, without being like, I can't do another one of these daggum movies. What's the sweet spot? Because you were in a lot last year and I didn't see yeah. any any um, loss of quality. Right. You know, there isn't the answer to that question is simply. It's all dependent on the people that I'm doing it with and the people who I'm participating in this with. The executives, yeah. the world, the people that I'm dealing with. If the atmosphere is good, then I'll I'll do whatever I need to do to make 
each project interesting and um, worthwhile in my world. Um, however much that is, I don't know. And that would depend, but that's, that's really kind of the barometer. It's not necessarily like a certain amount. If I did one of these movies and I really didn't enjoy it and right. felt like the environment was toxic, then that would be the last one. So but it really just comes down them. to that. So, so clearly not the case, not the case. And so, yeah, I have a very simple approach to most things. And that is all I care about is good things, good people. This is why I spend my time with folks like yourself. I, I make it my business to, to make those two things the top priority, nothing else. Do you, um, you, you mentioned that you're busy and you got a lot. Yeah. Cheers to you too, pal. You got a lot going on, trying to fit it all. And you just want to play ball with the boys. When do you, do you have time to, to watch things that interest you? And what are oh, those yeah. things that you're, you're watching or that you make time in your schedule to, to watch? Yes, uh, absolutely. I watch things. It's one of the few places that I have time to sort of do, cause it's not exhausting to watch something. Um, mm -hmm. I was just watching Licorice Pizza again. Right. You, I I, you've seen somebody, a double time. Again implies you've seen it before. I saw it in theaters. Yeah. When okay. I was in theaters in Los Angeles. And, uh, and I was showing somebody last night who had never seen this movie before. I was showing them There Will Be Blood. Um, uh, been watching Formula One on Netflix, which is one of the greatest docuseries ever made. Super I was going to ask, rated. that's a docu, that's not a, uh, it's not reenacted. Like it's. No, it's not a narrative yeah. thing. It's a, it's a documentary series. And then I watched the, the, uh, the vegan documentary series as well. I, uh, recently. I just finished inventing Anna and that popped up and I feel like I should give that a go. I'm big into cons who isn't right now, but there's well, something that, fascinating. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. There's something fascinating about the world of cons. In, in Anna's case, I, I don't know if you've, you're familiar with the Inventing Anna story. I started it. I started yeah. the first 10 minutes. The interesting case to be made for Anna is like how, how much of it is a con and how much of it is hustle. That's the argument right. that, the, that her lawyer was making is she's a 20-year-old a, a girl in New York City who's just hustling. And who right. who hasn't who hasn't uh, fudged on their resume a little bit, you know? So it's an interesting case we made with a lot of these cons, like with uh, with uh, WeWork. Like it's just, you know, there's lots going on where it's just like people are just trying to make it, and it's a little bit different than like, um, you know, somebody who's like just blatantly out there just trying to get rich and and steal people's money. Like, that's the argument. It's interesting. Well, the thing is too is that you just so much of our culture is that is like toting that as a banner of pride of like fake it till you make it like you got to be out there just like doing this doing this doing this there's so much right. in our culture that applauds that and forwards that as like a like a lifestyle like i wake up and arise and grind and me personally i think this whole thing is very silly i can't imagine that's something that one could maintain nor really feel good about inside right. um prioritizing the wrong things like that but even even like i'm watching um the dropout about yes. uh, Elizabeth Holmes, some yep. sort of thing, you know, it's obviously a, a blurry area, but. But like with her, it's... it was for it's not just because she wanted to get filthy rich. It's for a good reason. Like, I believe that her motives began pure with wanting to actually get the drop of blood that could save <clears throat> people's lives. Well, this is the thing is that but one of the wor first things that she said as a young person was not I want to save people's lives. It was. I want to be a billionaire or I'm going to be a billionaire. So then yep, really you track fair. it back and you go, what is the initial instinct? And this is, this is the thing is like, we live in such an, a world where everybody's in such the gray and the truth really is in the nuances, which is so great why there is these docu-series out there because it helps us examine the nuances of these things and ask these questions. And I mean, I hope just leads people back to like all this stuff regardless of what it appears to be at the time of it. Like, you know, I remember Elizabeth Holmes being this icon. I remember like even this vegan story, it's like they're, they're for a large period of time. These people are like applauded and heralded as a thing and their viewpoint on hustling or, you know, grinding or these kinds of values 
is what's being put out there. It's important for us to follow up after the fact and go, that didn't work out. This person right. was, you know, in, inappropriately representing themselves. And so hopefully that's what people take away and realize that like the important things in life is, you know, being an actual good human being or, you know, valuing people around you who deserve that kind of value and time and, and not uh, prioritizing the wrong things. But this is why we gravitate towards each other because I know you, you being in the, in, in showbiz, you are yeah. like, it's, it's, it's surrounded by con people. Like, Oh yeah. It, everybody's working an angle. And so when you come across somebody who is just genuine and down to clown, like you gravitate towards those people, the people that we have on this show on a regular basis, we bring them back because we feel that, that kinship with them. Like, we, we're just yeah. we just we just want to have fun like that's that's the goal we want to have fun we want to bring joy and so totally it's tough it's tough though and i am we're like it's so far removed from the industry but we're like fringe enough to where we see it you know and so it, i know yeah. you being in it it's just you're surrounded by it i imagine that it does it does it get easier the the longer you're like you more time you spend in la to kind of sniff out the bs or you kind of get numb to it and you're like, whatever, like it is what it is. It, it's, it is always disappointing when you think you have a relationship with somebody and it turns out that that person is just not capable of that kind of thing. They're in this sort of fight or flight mode and they're yeah. always kind of ankling for something and, and all of a sudden they sort of show their teeth in some weird way and you go, oh, okay, I didn't know that it was like that. Like I, I thought... I thought I was participating in a very wholesome, you know, clean, positive dynamic. And now that's not the case. And it's tough because in the business that we're in, there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of it around artists and manipulating artists and trying to appear one way um, so that artists can feel comfortable. Meanwhile, this is not at all the intention. It's wow. And it's really, really hard to maintain that type of, sincerity um in this business in any business of creativity or art i think and business even like a, a entrepreneur friends of mine it's the same thing it's like people are cutthroat but at the end of the day i take solace in the fact that people seem to value it and so just be a good person everybody comes around and it'll all work out you get to spend My, good times and you know what it's all that matters in the end right and then, but i you know and this this is tough but that's actually why dan's not here is he swindled both of us out of <laughs> a ton of money this week and so there he is he's on the land tough. right now and well he's in he's, he's on vacation to... how do you think he paid yeah. for that vacation <laughs> there you go i'll tell you how <laughs> um i know that you have things and so i don't want to i don't want to keep you any longer than than i have to so no you no tell hold me. on well just check, you know you 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 pull the plug when you've had enough let me I think the next thing is going to be at three thirty. Well, confirm yeah, that because I can. I can talk. Okay, because I can talk to you all day long. Well, I've I been drinking some whiskey, so you might be asking too much of me at this point. It started with a green smoothie, what? and now it's. Well, it's don't get mad at me. Don't get don't get on me about you drinking whiskey like it's somehow my We're fault. We're fine. There's, it is your fault. As soon as we started doing this, I went. What am I doing? What Why am I doing? drinking whiskey right now? Why wouldn't but, I? But are you going to be okay by 3.30? Are you going to? Yes. Do you need a yes, buffer? Yes, totally okay. No, no buffer. No buffer, ready to go. No, no um, buffers between you and me, Brad. What? So what, creatively, what's tickling your fancy? What? Are, like, I know, I don't want you to get into the details of the things that you're working on, but is there things that are like that are keeping you up like things that come to mind yeah. that excite you that you want to explore what what type of projects are those there is something that i um was doing in the desert a yes. while back we recall um, you uh we were we talked to you while you were in the desert at that uh yes. at that uh, uh, hotel that luxurious yeah yeah with shane grilla um yep. Shangri La bed bugs. Yeah, I stayed out there. That was trying to solve a location problem, um, right? Because our location uh, ended up being an issue. So that was that adventure, and then we ended up out there after that doing the actual thing. And uh, we've been a post production on this thing for a little bit. And um, yeah, 
so it's a it's a lovely little piece of work and i think uh yeah i don't know there's a lot of things that don't that don't get me too excited you know in, in like in the world as far as movies and things like i find things so repetitive and and so similar and so un like i watched deep water have you watched deep water i haven't but i've i've heard of it this is a refreshing movie say what you will about whatever about the movie but it is refreshing and as soon as it started i was like what is this and what is going on and this i very much appreciate and this thing what well, well, what was it about about it that was refreshing what it, what is a refreshing take for tyler hines it's just a different formula. Like we don't realize that we've fallen into the same sort of rhythms as an audience and as filmmakers. And a lot of people start to feel uncomfortable if those rhythms are messed with the sort of similar structures to how we tell stories and the similar pace in which things take place. And, and people who can forward the culture and the art and play with those and, and change it. This is something that's exciting to me because I'm starting to get a little bit bored by it all. Um, but the thing, all I have to say is the thing that I'm making with my friend is something that um, I keep coming back to. And every once in a while, I come back to it as we're doing this post-production and, and I have time to refocus on it. I'm just like, all I want to do is look at these images. You know what I mean? And that's got to be a good sign. And yeah. really is, is kind of what it's all about. So that'll be fun whenever that uh, materializes. Is it the acting that excites you or is it, are you producing directing writing whatever is it the storytelling side of it that excites you what what part of creativity is is uh scratching the itch it really it just comes down to good people good things he's mm. a good person and this is a good thing so how i participate in that thing is not super consequential you know like acting is obviously very fun and there's all kinds of ways in which you can indulge in that process to make it something interesting and, and rewarding and same with filmmaking and with its own hurdles and and all that kind of stuff but really what it comes down to is like good people and good things so like this thing is a good thing in my opinion and my taste i'm going like i want to look at this thing i keep i keep wanting to look at it and i'm in it and i don't necessarily want to watch that many things that i'm in i i, I know there's no suspension of disbelief and yet i want to look at these images and so that's that's uh that's fun. And there'll be more of that. It's just, again, making time. It's just to making time. It's just to making time. Um, give, give, uh, what, ad what advice would you give to a creative that wants to create something that feels fresh, but is uh, maybe, but, uh, you know, we live in the world of reboots and we live in the world of, you know, sequels where nothing feels original. Yes. So how do you get yes. past the point of feeling that that pull towards uh, just just the redo? How do you get over that hurdle towards originality and actually accomplish that? Just, I mean, I, I'm no I'm no example. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily have the answer, nor nor would I be someone necessarily to listen to. But my personal feelings of the last while is just um with anything really in life just do whatever it is you want to do and do exactly that and that plus time will eventually get you so good at that thing whatever it shapes into being maybe you thought you were going to end up here and you go down a road and you end up way over here but that entire time you were following your own instincts eventually you will end up somewhere original and you will end up somewhere good where you have sharpened a skill set that nobody else has spent the hours sharpening that you the, the particular hours that you've spent and it's at that moment that you may find yourself in a position where you're kind of untouchable and that's really the end the ideal place to be of course the challenge is how do you pay the bills while you do that right and this is the thing you know I think what you, the way you started it, though, is important. Like, do what you want to do. I think, and constantly having yes. to, to check yourself. Because there oh, yeah. is always going to be that pull of, yeah, but, yeah, but. Oh, yeah. Do, let's go back, go back to Hallmark. I think the reason, and I'm not trying to, to, you know, butter you up. The reason why people are gravitated towards Tyler Hines Hallmark movies is because each one does feel original. Even in the 
formula. Each character that Tyler's doing feels like a different character. He's doing something. He's, he's trying to mix things up. He's trying to do what he wants with it. And I, I think that does come, come, come through, but it's constantly having to check yourself. And in a very, you know, less consequential way, like we feel it with the podcast. Like we want, the goal of this podcast is to make each other laugh and to have fun. There's always that poll. Like we know that we could have bigger numbers if we did this or did this, but that's not what we want to do. And so it's constantly having to reevaluate the, the, the why, why you're doing it and just, just do what you want to do. Am I right? Yeah, you're a hundred percent right. I really appreciate you even saying that, even if you are buttering me up, because that is precisely what's what's kind of happening, or at least what I'm trying to do. And so, if that is felt in any way by anybody, then then uh, that's great, because that's entirely what I'm after. I, I, there's there isn't like an answer, to, you know, for everything of like I'm just going to do it all like this. It's just okay. I'm gonna this movie. Okay what's special about this okay i'm gonna i'm gonna change the rhythm of this guy to be a little bit like this because i feel like it services something different i'm gonna make him feel this way have a bit of this texture because it services this story and and in some way hopefully that keeps the uh the experience of the movies fresh in some way and so all those things go into sort of the consideration of it and, and so if that is appreciated on the other end then then I'm grateful because it all, it does take thought. It's like, even like, you know, coming towards today of doing a series of interviews, it's that extra moment that you take to go, well, okay, well, hold on. I'm not going to be one of these guys who's going to like be so busy that I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there and I'm going to jump in and, oh, you just caught me. And now we're doing an interview. Like, I don't want to be that guy. I want to take a minute and go, okay, I'm going to speak to some lovely individuals over the next day. And they're all going to take time out of their day to speak to me. And so what about this day do I want to achieve or what do I want to get out of it? And, uh, and what can I provide for these people to make it worthwhile for them? And it's a nice thought and it's a creative thought because it just puts a little bit of things in the back of your mind, you know, things that I want to speak about, like the fact that this movie, I want it to be something that's enjoyed by people and as an acknowledgement to everybody in the hospitality industry, these kinds of thoughts. Um, and it keeps it interesting. And it means that this whole day of interviews is not going to feel like me pumping my own tires or sitting here rambling on about nonsense or selling somebody something. Cause I don't want to take place. I don't want to take part in any of that. I don't want to yeah. sell anybody on a movie. I don't want to talk about things just to hear myself speak or to, you know, have, people pay attention to something I'm doing. I want none of that. But what I do want, I want to spend time with you. I want you, your, your creative outlet to, to, to be appreciated and enjoyed and make that an experience that's enjoyable. I want hopefully people when they watch the movie to think about, um, to think about the hospitality industry. I think what I'm going to do in, in this kind of thinking, I, I thought about what I want to do for when I do the giveaway of the clothes, I think I want to make it uh, different this time and, and make it so that people are encouraged to, to go and take somebody out on like a date night to a restaurant. because This is the best way we can service these. Uh, the hospitality industry is just by going and being a customer and appreciating them and showing that appreciation. And so I thought, how do I do that? I talked to my buddy who's in the restaurant business and I just kind of spoke to my mom and, and, and kind of thought like she, she said something that triggered me on a train of thought and I went okay that's what we'll do as well I'll, if you, people post a photo of them taking someone that they love out on a date night this is how you can possibly win maybe this jacket or whatever it is but it's that kind of thinking that wow. makes it engaging and enjoyable for me and and if it's appreciated on the other end and felt through the performances then bless because it's a lot of work <laughs> I'm glad people appreciate it to try to close the loop on both Hallmark and the creativity convo we've been having, uh, we were talking a little bit before we started. When I look at uh, a script, which I hardly ever do, but if I'm ever given the opportunity, uh, it's it's uh, I can't I can't envision what a character might look like. It, the the words are too the words are 2D. The characters 2D. 
But obviously something happens on your end where you read your lines and a, a, a person begins to form inside of your mind. What get just, uh, I, I, again, this is, this is Hallmark and it's, it's not overly serious, but what it, what does that process look like for you of reading the script to what we see on screen? Is it purely, I want to be as authentic. I want to bring what the, what you think the writer, wants to see or is it a creative process with the people behind the scenes of saying hey here's kind of what i see does this work and like because we we talked about wanting to make each character original obviously that doesn't always happen even though it's the, the same type of words on the page so what happens for you to make each of those characters original if that long-winded question made any sense at all that absolutely did and and definitely we want to touch on how you opened that question about how you uh, see words and, and read them in that fashion. Um, but I can tell that you want to steer away from it and just do this question. So what, what I'll say is... No, what do you mean? Well, do you want to talk about the fact that the, this is so fascinating, the fact that you read words and then don't it doesn't compete yes. in some sort of okay, fine. way? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm an open book. I can't envision okay. things. I can't see things in my mind. When I close my eyes... I can't see Tyler Hines' face, which is a big reason why, like, I prefer FaceTime over voice call because I want to be able to f uh, uh, see you. We've talked about this a little bit before. We have like, talked about this. Like, I'm so bad at texting back because I want to have a conversation with you. Um, and a part of that is that tricking my mind. Like, I can't envision you. Therefore, Visualize. I don't feel like I'm talking. I don't feel like I'm talking to you, even though I am. So the fact that I can do this and see you it, uh, it is a big thing. So like when I close my eyes and this makes everybody really sad, but I can't envision my wife and that's sad for everybody involved, <laughs> but it's a thing. And I dream in black and white. Apparently there's a correlation there. There's like only like, I don't know, like, but it's three. just visual. It's not audio. Like you can hear your wife. If you were to think of your wife's voice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear her. Okay. And that's a big read. Like, when I'm, I just finished working on an audio project and I, like, for me, I could hear it the whole time. When I was recording the subject, I knew exactly yeah. how I was going to trim it up, splice things in to make it come alive. But well, I can't do, like, I, I, I could never be a, like, I don't think I could be a director or, because I just right. can't, can't envision it. And that's why it's like no, I keep I telling myself that, yeah. I want to write I want to write a movie I want to write a Hallmark mm. movie, but mm. I just can't. Like I can't get over the hurdle of in the envisioning thing. Well, what about writing it from like a, like you know they used to have these you know like Orson Welles and you know obviously they have it I think on podcasts now too where it's like audio versions of a movie or a show where it's speaking in characters and talking and scene dialogue and, and scene direction and these kinds of things. Like if you thought about it in that context, would you be able to go like, all right, I'm going to write a movie as if people were just going to listen to the movie. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's an interesting thought. I, I've, I've never experimented with, I think part of it for me is the, the fiction side of things like, yeah. When I'm talking with somebody, it's real. When I'm hearing your story, it's real. So I'm able to kind of picture how I want to put that together. But when I'm okay. making something up, it, like I, I, it never feels full. It feels, okay. it feels like there's, uh, there's emptiness that needs some pat, like needs something to, to spice it up a little bit. So maybe but I, I maybe, you maybe alone. Okay. And feeling that way. I think other writers probably feel that way. And this is why you have writers like approaching actors going, wow, like I can't believe you took this character and you brought him to life. You hear these kind of sentiments. And so I think if you're thinking that that's some sort of um, reality specific to you, you might be wrong. It, it, it may be a very common feeling that writers who are creating some of the maybe the worlds that you appreciate the most felt that same way when they wrote it is like, I think I've got this down, but it doesn't feel fleshed out. It doesn't feel three dimensional. Yeah. Maybe I'm not quite getting the voice right. And that's where an actor then comes in and a director to then help round out that vision. And that's the kind of perfect symbiosis that happens if you have a good film and stuff. And so 
you might be shortchanging yourself before you even get off to the races. Cause fine, Tyler. Fine. We'll write a life. movie together. Like quit twisting my arm. Like I don't, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, do what you want to do the way you want to do it. And this, this not being able to visualize thing may be a superpower. This may create a slant to your voice that maybe have shortcomings on its own merit, but when married with the right creative team on the other end, maybe it yields a different result that is more spectacular than if there were to be a different version that you could visualize. I'm just saying that's a real well, thing. Well, my answer is I do, Tyler. We will get married I do too. creatively. There it is. Do you want to answer the question in the time that we have about how you approach what the Hallmark the characters? Question? I don't know. Something about like when you see it, how do you, whatever. I don't care. Well, I, this seems like a lifetime ago <laughs> that this was posed. But was it, I think the answer was it's a cocktail of things. How, how do I approach trying to make these things unique? Like in what, in what process do I go about it? Yeah, um, like you, you, you see, what's the name of your character? Will, Will, Willard, uh, ben. and almost Moray. Let me see. Let me pull it up. Yeah, almost Moray. Ben, uh, it's Ben. Benjamin. So you're reading the script. You're reading what Ben is saying. You're reading the yeah. story. At at some point, um, a character begins to form in your mind of what Ben is like. You know, you're probably creating some sort of backstory for Ben that's not actually there, that you're kind of reading between the lines. How did Ben get here? What does the process look for you creatively to do what you want to do with Ben and not just make Ben another Hallmark character? Well, you're kind of looking at what the script is doing to, to our conversation about what you were saying about your circumstance. I'm trying to see what the writer is trying to do how far along in that process they got, what might be missing, what this movie's trying to achieve, and then start building in possible character traits combined with the dialogue and how it's playing and the dynamic between the characters. Like something very simple for Ben is like, I'm thinking about guys like Gordon Ramsay and, and these kinds of like chefs who mm -hmm. have a certain cadence and a certain rhythm and a certain atmosphere when they come into a room and they deal with people they're kind of harsh and kind of direct and kind of funny um it's not quite appropriate for this movie because of the way the script was I, I i would love to make a movie where i'm playing somebody who's like gordon ramsay not the case but there's not a single f word in this movie no exactly Hard but pass. it would be so fun to have even if it was like a hint of that and so you know that's something that i thought okay well there's the real sweet, gentle version of this guy, but what is that doing for anybody? And does that even right. seem real? Or do we, do we let this guy really treat this thing like it is and an occupation that it would be? And those that can show itself in ways like talking a little bit faster, having a certain sort of vibe when it comes to these scenes and his approach to how he holds himself and like things like that that can start to take shape all just to service like how do you make the most enjoyable movie at the end and try to get there don't just make those decisions for your own selfish reasons or maybe do or maybe just be like you know what i want to speak with a french accent and a lisp i'm just gonna do it try to stop me that might happen <laughs> i mean i flatten my hair down like like lloyd from dumb and dumber you did, did do a thing with your hair yeah i did that was a choice you darn right it was, and it was my choice, my choice alone. Really? I said, you know you didn't run it by anybody. You showed this. up to set one day with flat hair, and you said, hey, flat Tyler over here. That's what's up. Try to stop me. And what a boss move. That's uh. Well, there's no winning, right? You go up, you go down, you go left, you go right. Everybody's got something to say. It's too long. It's too short. This doesn't matter. None of it matters. The point is, is, to, is we're, we're looking at like uh, an experience now. And so you just you do what serves that experience. And I, I would love to just be wildly ugly in one of these movies. Just like just let's just see an ugly guy fall in love. Like not saying that I'm some prize, but I know that they're sitting there trying to like prop me up like I'm not the most unattractive guy in the world. And maybe one day I'd like to just show up as me, just an ugly schmo. And let's watch that guy fall in love. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yeah, you man. Know? Yeah, 
It it feels. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that Hallmark's going to get to the point where they're like, "Yeah, I guess. I guess. Sure. Let's let's just make Tyler ugly. Like that's what the people want." Who knows? Well, stranger things have happened. They're getting close with this one. Am I right, buddy? <laughs> I think it looks great. I think. I think you look great, great too. I think it's different. Did you find out about the sweater that I that I cinched, that I asked you about? Remember that green sweater? Oh. Yeah, no, I gotta find. Uh, I think that's at another spot. I gotta go pull it up and see if I actually walked away with it. You want that great you, sweater, huh? If Something you about find, it just tickled you. If you find, I loved it. I just thought, uh But there's the I, I had I have. Um, we've been around each other before, and I know that there's a si- like a, a size difference. There's no way we're wearing <laughs> the same clothes. Like what? What size know. shirt are you I'll wearing? What you. size shirt are you wearing right now? Uh I generally wear extra large in my life, but I don't no, know you do not. Is. I do, yes, because I like oversized things. Does that say small? Yeah, that's a small. <laughs> this is, I think, from one of these Hallmark movies. I don't so know you need to one, tell but... me that Tyler Hines wears anywhere in between a small and an extra large. An Pick extra your poison. Large, yeah. You literally, you could buy anything for him, and he's down to clown. Correct. I've gotten some Harley shirts for some lovely individuals, and I wear those. Yeah, and they fit okay. Style. But looking at the sweater, the fit of the sweater on you in the trailer, there's no way in any world if I, that that's if I recall extra large. Well, hold on. Let's do some math here. Okay, if fine. I recall correctly, I think that sweater had some give. One. Two, how tall are you? 5'11". Okay. Five ten, five eleven. That's not helping things. So I'm five ten. So we're at the same size. But I don't think your frame is that different from mine. I'm almost Tyler, in your days these days. Stop. But stop. that being said, this Tyler, sweater, you eat nothing but apples. Like there's no, there's not a world where a guy who eats nothing but apples and a guy who eats nothing but like cheese and drinks whiskey. milk every yeah. night is wearing the same sweater. It's not happening. I will say if you find the sweater and you send me the sweater, I will wear the sweater on the show no matter how it makes me look, but I'm just saying there's no way I'm going it's going to comfortably fit me. My point in sending you the picture was, boy, I wish I had a sweater like that. I wasn't trying to get the sweater off of your body because I'm not dumb enough to think that we wear the same clothes. Well, that's a dangerous game to play because, you know, I'm known for doing that. So, first of all, if the sweater exists in my possession, it's going straight to you. Great. Second of all, I'll wager a bet that it'll fit you just beautifully. I think it'll hug you in all the right ways, just like I would. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got to go. I love you, buddy. Yeah, I think I do. I got to go now. It was good to see you. So good, man. Long overdue. I've been pretty quiet as of late on these things, but, you know, it's so nice to, to actually sit and hang out and, and chat. We should do this even just not on these podcasts. That would be cool. Well, so you don't I have to visualize I, me. I think we're, <laughs> yeah, I'm just always wondering, like, what's Tyler wearing? Um, <laughs> that's actually, it's just my dirty way of just, you know, asking you. Um, right. I think we might be, uh, uh, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it yet, but I think we're going to be at Rama Drama. So we'll get to hang out. Oh, great. Oh, amazing. Yes. I hope that all comes together and we all get to just spend some time happily in Florida. It's going to be hot <sighs> there, isn't it? Jeez. It's always hot in Florida. Gosh, I hate that place. Tarps are going to come off, buddy. Shirts I grew up. I grew up. I grew up in Florida, so I'm allowed to hate on it. Um, okay. I I would be. I'd be personally okay never going back to that 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 spot. But for you, and the people, and the heinies, I'll I'll come. I'll be there. Yes, you will. And you'll That's enjoy the plan. It. You'll love it. Uh, Always Amore uh, is airing in April uh, sometime. Go go watch it. It's like who 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 is. Who is watching this or listening to this and going, if only I knew when it came out, then I'd watch it. You know when it comes out. If you're watching this, you know when it comes out, so watch it when it comes out. It's the stupid thing that people do where they're promoting things. They're like, here's the date it comes out. We know, or we will know. You're not going to help me. I'm not breaking the news. You're right. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. I love you, pal. Merry Christmas. Later. Merry Christmas. 
Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam Podcast Network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.